Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so I am here tonight because I have a, a problem. <laughs> My problem is I get nerdy about things. And by things, I mean everything. And I spend way too many hours on Wikipedia accumulating knowledge about uh, obscure topics. <laughs> like perhaps uh, how big is a capybara? <laughs> uh, and to justify this, uh, I do this thing where I try to make analogies with the things uh, I learn to my work. Uh, and I want to share with you tonight one of the one of the analogies that I made that helped me overcome the uh, inertia to start writing tests. Uh, and hopefully this can help some of you as well. Uh, so I make some assumptions about this working. I make some assumptions about uh, the audience for this talk. Uh, one of which is that you actually want to write tests. Uh, if you're not writing tests uh, and you don't want to write them, then uh, there's nothing here that can help you. Uh, if you're already writing tests, this talk might not be for you, but I included some animated GIFs, so uh, stay focused. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the second assumption is that there's a basic understanding of why writing tests is a good idea. Um, so if you sat through the previous talk and you felt like uh, I should be doing this, uh, then that's a good start. Uh, so you want to write tests and you know why, uh, but for some reason you're still not doing it. Uh, and you seemingly, seemingly don't know why. If you want to write tests and your hindrance is uh, something like your boss doesn't let you write tests or uh, your personal belief system prohibits you from writing tests, uh, then this is not a talk for you either. I also have to warn you, there's no code in this, uh, this talk. Um, it's more, it addresses more the mental hurdle of starting to write tests. Um, so I got the idea of giving this talk a week ago at our retreat when I was talking to one of my colleagues. Uh, we were getting quite philosophical, uh, talking about testing. Uh, and we became a bit elitist and even Oster said the question, can, can you judge a person's character from looking at their tests? <laughs> and this kind of reminded me how, uh, how this analogy got me started. So the assumption of, of this, uh, or the realization I had, is that writing tests is like working out. Uh, and I, if you're not convinced now, then bear with me because uh, I will get into this a bit more. Uh, you could also say that uh, exercising your code is like exercising your body. And in particular, writing tests is like working out in the sense that uh, we all know we should be doing it. Uh, but when we're given the choice between going to the gym uh, or grinding out level 241 of Candy Crush Saga, uh, not few of us end up like this. <laughs> and this disconnect between uh, what we think we should be doing and what we're actually doing uh, causes a lot of discomfort. Uh, and it make us, makes us worry. And I, my hope with this talk is that I can relieve you of some of that worry. Uh, and be happier. So to back off a minute uh, and just make sure, if anyone is thinking this, th then yes, you should be worried now. Um, but let's take this moment and see uh, the benefits of writing tests. Because we understand that we should do it and we understand why. Uh, so how does this relate to the benefits of working out? The first one is quite obvious. Uh, working out gives you confidence so think about demoing your code to the product owner as uh, taking your shirt off in the bedroom. 
Only don't confuse the two. <laughs> Second, writing tests adds robustness to your code. Uh, when, you, when we get older, we, we run into the risk of suffering from catastrophic injury like uh, shattered hip. Uh, because as we get older, our, our bodies get weaker, and this is also true for your code. The older it gets, the more prone it is to that catastrophic breakdown. Uh, and lastly, working out boosts your immune system, and we don't want to catch bugs. Right? My, my girlfriend is here tonight, uh, and she hates puns, so I do it. <laughs> so, if we know that we should test, and testing is awesome, because it really is, then why is it so hard to get started? Uh, I think this is a purely psychological hurdle. I mean, there's nothing mechanical from stopping your fingers writing the test on the keyboard. Uh, and I identified four problems I had when I wanted to start writing tests. Uh, and I drew on the sort of fitness community to help me solve this problem. Because it turns out that uh, getting off the couch and going to the gym is a well-explored problem. Uh, so the first reason it was hard is because of fear. And this was by far the biggest reason. Uh, and it's a, it's a deep and primal fear, a fear of social exclusion. Uh, because this is something we think we should be doing. And if you've ever been to school, which I hope most of you have been, uh, you might you might ha have found yourself in the position where uh, the teacher is talking about something in the lecture and you don't really know what's going on, but no one else is saying anything. Uh, so you assume that everyone else already knows it, this, and you were the only one not getting it. Uh, I think there are more people there out there not writing tests than we think. Uh, and if there are not, then I was the only one. Uh, yeah, so for me it got to the level where I became paranoid and I was watching my colleagues and I was like, yeah, I bet he's writing a test right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how, how, how they deal with this in the fitness community is uh, they recruit people to support you. Uh, recruit people who share your goal. Uh, they say that to get stronger you need to uh, put yourself in an environment of strong people. Uh, if you do pair programming, spend the time on writing tests. If you have a mentor, uh, tell them about your fear and uh, have them help you get started. Uh, and I think you will see that most of this fear was uh, unfounded. Uh, and if you genuinely think that uh, you still have something to fear, then you should come work for us instead. Uh, after you recruit these people, make yourself accountable to them. Uh, so it can be something as simple as taking a primitive measurement like test coverage and setting a baseline for the project. The second problem I faced when I wanted to start writing tests uh, was becoming overwhelmed. So this can happen for two reasons. Either you don't have enough information or you have too much information. Uh, the first time I tried to write tests, I had an environment something like this. Uh, I had RSpec in there, I had Factory Girl, I had Capybara. Uh, the problem was, is I didn't know any of them. Uh, RSpec and Factory Girl, quite radical DSLs. Uh, I still get a headache sometimes when I, when I work with it. Uh, and I felt a bit like this. <laughs> so, the way the fitness world uh, suggests you deal with this is quite obvious. Uh, start simple, and for me that translated into using something like mini-tests, uh, 
uh, I even uh, I even cut Rails out of the equation. I just used Minitest. My first test, I tested the built-in classes in, in Ruby. Uh, so focus on the things you know. Uh, focus on the things you can do right now. Uh, and focus on the things that are important. The third problem I had with starting to write, write tests was overreaching. Uh, in fitness, this is called a flat tire syndrome. And every new year, we see thousands of people uh, starting their new lives. Uh, they run 10 miles per day for two weeks, leaving off seven almonds. Uh, and after that, they start feeling something like this. And inevitably, one miss in their diet would then lead them to think that everything is lost and they will go on a two-day binge. Uh, the solution to this is to start light and strive for constant progress. What you're doing when you're starting to write tests is to build a habit. Uh, and you have to trust in accumulation and realize that a code base that took many weeks to put in a very horrid state is it gonna be fixed overnight. Uh, so you might need to Give up on your hopes on fixing that really annoying method uh, right away and give it some time. The fourth problem I encountered was that it all seemed like a paradox to me. Uh, I was caught in some kind of catch-22 or chicken and the egg problem where to start writing tests I needed to, knew, to know how to start, how to write tests. Uh, and to write tests I need to start writing them. Uh, and everything just seemed hard. Uh, it turns out this wasn't a problem at all. Uh, it's not a paradox. Uh, you don't need to know how to write tests to start writing them. Uh, and in hindsight, the notion is quite absurd. Because uh, if that were true, then we couldn't ever learn to walk or talk or do anything. Uh, so instead I focused on three things. This is also copied from the fitness world. Uh, do one thing at a time. If you want to learn RSpec, Capybara and Factory Girl, uh, start with one of them and then you can add in the other two. Uh, start with the most important thing first. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to learn RSpec before you learn shoot the matchers. Uh, and third, but not least, uh, start now. And I think this is the biggest takeaway. Uh, if you're not writing tests, what you want to, uh, literally start now. If you bring, brought a laptop, uh, fire it up in the break and write, write a test. <coughs> so at the beginning of this talk, I said that writing tests is like working out. And I hope I made a case for myself already. Uh, but in case you're not convinced, I, I found some fitness quotes on the internet and I retrofitted them to apply to testing. And here we go. Firstly, <laughs> when in doubt, test. <coughs> Let coverage be your stress reliever. And last, but maybe most importantly, Test like Shining Tatum is watching. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, I totally agree, and I also contend that probably you shouldn't write tests for bad code. Like you can you can totally test it, but it's still gonna be bad. <laughs> Uh, so when you're when you're trying to learn testing, did you uh, just as an, a thought experiment, did you try like taking existing tests that other people had written and like uh, experimenting with those uh, to try and learn kind of what was going on, or was that not useful? Uh, I think actually I think that was one of the things that contributed to my fear yeah. because I watched these awesome tests that my colleagues wrote uh, and I only saw the result I didn't see the, all the effort they, that went into learning all those things uh, and then I felt a bit inadequate because this was nowhere near the level of test writing gotcha. I think just from personal experience I think one of the difficulties I, I had when learning testing was that it's the flexibility of Ruby and the ability to monkey patch and all these things building out on top of each other. So you've got Ruby, you've got Rails on top of Ruby, and then RSpec to, to probe it, and then Capybara to, to drive everything else. So it wasn't very clear to me in the code which bit was which. And that was a lot of part of my problem. But the moment I started re recognizing that this is our RSpec matcher, and another bit that comes with Capybara, it got a lot easier. This is definitely one of the problems I had with RSpec and Factory Girl. Uh, because all the DSLs came in at the same yes, time. Yeah, exactly. One of, I was going to say, one of the things that I've found in my own experience and the teams that I've been with is that uh, we've got an unknown and arguably unknowable number of independently moving parts in any significant application with or without a test. So you, if, if you read people like James Copeland, he's been arguing for a couple of years that it's impossible to fully test an application because there are so many logic paths through any non-trivial piece of code that you will miss something significant, and that something significant will, at some point, come back and bite you in the short hairs. And uh, testing is one of the things that is delaying our New London School explosion, but it is by no means obviating. And if you don't know what the New London School explosion was, go look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think that.